Okay, so it is the next day and it snowed a lot. Here you can see the cars. We have a ton of snow. There's a Model Y under here somewhere. And then Model S under here. Lots and lots and lots of snow. So what we're gonna do is actually go ahead and turn on preconditioning on both cars at the same time and check in on it every 10 minutes like we did in the last video where we did Model 3 versus Model S and just kind of see how long it takes for the cabin on each one to reach temperature. Now in the last video we were kind of talking about how long you'd have to precondition your car to remove all the snow. We might still do that. Yes, it's not very feasible when a brush would just remove all this pretty much instantly, but we're really curious to see how long it takes to heat up the cabin. So there's actually a temperature sensor in model S and X in the center console, and then in three and Y it's right under the screen. So that's where it's gonna read the ambient temperature, and we're gonna see how fast they actually do heat up. Cause I'm curious if this heat pump is gonna do it more efficiently potentially. So we'll be able to see range and if there's any loss and stuff like that. So it's been almost 24 hours. The car's sitting out here completely full of snow. We have Model S over here. We have Model Y under all this. So we're gonna go ahead and precondition both through the app and see how much range is used and how fast they actually do get up to temperature because Model Y has a heat pump. Model S does not, and heat pumps are supposed to be more efficient, however, it is cold, it's like 18 degrees out right now, and we probably got about like 9 inches of snow, obviously the road and everything, it didn't stick because it was like 70 the other day, but yeah, so let's go ahead and get testing. But right off the bat, I don't, hope you guys can hear that, I hope it's getting picked up. Model Y is very, very loud, and I say very loud because in relation to S, it's loud. But yeah, hopefully you guys can hear that. I assume that's just the heat pump. And then let's see if we can get over here for model S. It's much, much quieter. You probably couldn't hear anything because that's gonna drown it out. And actually, since we've been here, you can kind of hear it. it sounds like it's ramping down. Hopefully you guys can hear that. Model Y. There's nothing happening where the autopilot cameras are. Model S, there is. However, don't be fooled. It's not the autopilot cameras that we think. Um, we actually have a black view camera in this car, and we think it's actually just that camera that heated up a little bit overnight, because it actually will produce some heat, and that's what probably melted that little divot right there. But you can see Model Y side camera is completely encased, and over here on Model S, it isn't. Okay, so here's something everybody loves is the FLIR because we can see all the hot spots, everything. As you can see though, I'm not seeing like any super amount of heat besides way down here and that's just a parking sensor. I'm not seeing like any like big like block or something that would tell us that's the front radar. So I don't know if that's necessarily heated. And that's on Model Y. And then here we'll move over to Model S. Same thing here, maybe because the fronts are already clear, it doesn't heat it, I don't know. We can see that camera is definitely heated, the side. It's way hotter than everything else. And then this isn't really gonna show us much because you do have the windows there and they do reflect also. You can see the these quarter panels have heated up slightly. Wow, look at how wide it looks. Y is really heating up compared to Model S. Let's see if we can get both in the shot here. Wow. So we'll just check out this camera over here. You can definitely tell it's heated. This one is still uh, hidden under there. So it doesn't look like that is. Now for the glass, again, you are gonna get that reflection so you can actually see me in it. So not always the greatest, but you can see it doesn't appear that side camera is really heated. Now we don't have either car, so that summon will keep the car ready. And uh, the car, you can actually set that setting. We don't actually keep that enabled because we don't really summon our cars that much to really make it worth the time. But it will actually kind of keep the cameras heated, I believe and ready to use. Okay, these first five minutes are huge. Look at this, we already got snow falling off in just the first couple minutes on Model Y versus Model S. Okay, so 10 minute check, 
You can see a lot of snow has fallen off on this side already. Nothing on Model S has fallen off. Oh, and then the back windows fell off over here. Oh, so we do have this side on Model S finally. One thing we were thinking though is potentially the slope right here. Once we get all the snow off, we'll have to see the slope on Model S might be a little bit less than on Model Y, which seems to be a little steeper, which means it's going to fall off faster. So keep that in mind. Cameras still seem to be frozen. Oh well, yeah, that camera is completely encased in snow on this side still. Here we are at the 15 minute check. As you can see on the right side, we have a lot more snow that fell off, especially on that rear quarter panel there. You can see model S still looks about the same. This side of Y, we actually also lost that rear quarter panel of snow. And then this side, I believe looks the same too. For the 30 minute check, I don't really see any change on the right side of model Y or on Model S. Uh, that side appears to have cleaned up a bit. And same thing, don't really see much different on this side either. Okay, it's been like an hour and 20 minutes now, which is a stupid amount to run everything. But you can see we got windshields clearing off. Um, I have no idea what happened here. Yeah, okay, interesting. This all seems to be sliding. Oh yeah, that's probably it, it's all sliding back. Now we have all this, which is interesting because we never turned on the rear defrosters over on Model S. You can see that windshield has thawed out a ton. Okay, so here we have both cars right there. We got Y right here. We have S right there. And what we're gonna do is open the trunk. As you might recall, we actually did a video of the Model 3 trunk opening it with snow, and it didn't end up so well. So uh, a situation has arisen, it has snowed, right here on the car um and it's very it, concentrated snowstorm very very concentrated very abnormal colorado weather though what are you gonna do so we're just gonna pretend like i need to put something back here oh so much snow uh, oh man <laughs> <laughs> wow okay um designed in california mm -hmm. right so we're gonna try it with this yes some has melted off of the y not so much on the s so let's go ahead and go ahead and hit trunk Way too much snow on mine compared to yours. Oh, wow, much better than the. Yeah, much better than the three. Try it again. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't like that oh, at it's all. Too heavy. I got way more snow on mine. Oh, wow. It's, we're going to use this fancy thing. Look at this. Yeah, just your, ultimate snow Yeah, because yours was steeper, so more of it slid oh. off. Oh, I have that too. Okay, now try yours. Oh, look at that. Yeah, and nothing slides in. And this is why we love hatchbacks, because you don't have the potential as much for snow to fall in, much like it did in the Model 3 video, if you guys remember that. Okay, just clean the snow off of these two cars, and we're actually gonna pull the FLIR out in a second. But as you can see, Model S has a ton of ice, like, caked on. And now I can scrape it off because this car is wrapped and it has ceramic coat on it, so it's actually gonna come off relatively easy, but still, a lot of ice caked on. Now this has nothing. It is literally all melted off. So definitely thinking the heat pump helped clean off the hood and Model S doesn't have that. So the hood's still full of snow and ice. So let's go ahead and grab the FLIR real quick. Already popped the frunk so that we can peek inside with the FLIR and see what kind of temperature we get. Okay, so here on Model Y, you can see the temperature is actually decently warm. Warm enough so we didn't get any ice crystals on the hood. Model S though has a lot of ice crystals. And it's still a lot colder in here. So I definitely think that heat pump helped heat up the snow on the actual frunk itself. So here on the outside you can see this is about 14 degrees and the snow was literally just removed so it's not like sun had any impact and this is almost double more than double 32. okay so back in the model y i went ahead and cleaned both cars off real quick this test isn't to show you how long it would take to necessarily melt all the snow off of your car because i mean i probably wiped everything off in just a few minutes whereas 
running everything was like an hour, hour and a half. This test is mainly to show you how much of the battery it actually will use to precondition the car and really kind of get everything going. Both temperatures have dropped down to a more comfortable 72 degrees. When we were doing this, we just put it on high because we wanted it to heat up as quick as possible. Now we saw the cabin temperatures heat up very, very quickly within like five or 10 minutes. And now the FLIR, I found that pretty interesting because I thought Model Y was supposed to have a front heated radar and it's uh, 20 degrees out right now. Well, I guess when we started, it was like 15. Now it's closer to like 20, 25. And we didn't see any heated front radar in Model Y or S. And the only cameras we really saw that were heated were the side repeater cameras on Model S. So I don't know if that's maybe something that's coming up in the future or, I mean, I don't know, maybe it only heats up if it's really, really cold or there's some kind of blockage in front of it and the radar isn't working. I'm not entirely sure. We'll have to uh, kind of play around with that a little bit more. Maybe do an update in a future video if we can get it to actually heat up. So the moment of truth with how much energy each car used. We were kind of thinking the why hopefully would be a little bit more efficient because that heat pump. But we did the math. So Model S is rated at 330 watt hours per mile and it used 29 miles in the one hour test we did for preconditioning the car. So that equates to 9,570 watt hours or 9.6 kilowatt hours out of that pack is a 100 kilowatt hour pack. Now Model Y is actually rated at 280 watt hours per mile and used 39 miles in the one hour preconditioning test, which equates to 10,920 watt hours or 10.9 kilowatt hours. So the Model Y definitely used more energy to precondition itself. Now we have learned that the heat pumps don't always operate the best in super cold temperatures. I don't know. There's a, a lot of thoughts we had going into this that I didn't actually foresee. I definitely thought Model Y was going to be more efficient because that heat pump. I don't know. That's just kind of my thoughts here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it though. It was actually kind of a fun test. I know when we did the Model 3 versus Model S, that video did extremely well. You guys really loved it. So we want to go and test it out again. Anyway though, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to see any other tests with Model Y, definitely drop them down below and let me know what you expected to see from this. Did you expect to see Model Y be a little bit more efficient? Or what did you think and what were your thoughts with the outcome? As always though, huge thanks to our channel sponsor, Abstract Ocean. If you guys are looking to accessorize your Model S, X3, or Model Y, much like this one, definitely check them out. I'll link down below and using code Tesla inventory will get you 15% off of your first purchase. A couple must have accessories that we've already put in this Model Y that I would definitely recommend for people are gonna be a center console wrap. It'll really just help protect that gloss black material that Tesla uses because it can scratch and show fingerprints very easily. And with the wrap, if you ever wanted to, you can just peel it off, change the color. You can just peel it off when you sell the car and everything under it will look brand new. It's a great way to help protect the center console as well as a matte screen protector. It will really help reduce any glare from the sun on the screen, which is really nice, especially coming into these summer months, but it'll also help reduce any fingerprints. It has an oleophobic surface as well as being matte it really hides those a lot which i absolutely love because there's nothing worse than looking at the screen seeing a bunch of fingerprints and glare it's not fun it kind of ruins the experience a little bit but yeah that's basically it hopefully you guys enjoyed it as always a thumbs up if you did go and click here to subscribe here for some other ones and we'll see you guys in the next one bye